Hello and welcome to this channel. In this video we will talk about sleep-related breathing disorders. Sleep-related breathing disorders are a group of medical conditions characterized by breathing difficulties during sleep. These disorders affect millions of people worldwide and can have serious health consequences if left untreated. In this video, we will talk about the three most common sleep-related breathing disorders, their causes, symptoms and treatment options. The three main types of sleep-related breathing disorders are obstructive sleep apnea, central sleep apnea and complex sleep apnea syndrome. We will go through the different types individually in the following parts. In the end of the video, we will make a comparison of obstructive sleep apnea and central sleep apnea to really highlight the key differences. Let's first talk about obstructive sleep apnea. Obstructive sleep apnea is a common sleeping disorder that occurs when the airways become partially or completely blocked during sleep, leading to interruptions in breathing. This interruption can last for a few seconds or longer and can occur multiple times during the night, leading to a poor quality of sleep. The most common cause of obstructive sleep apnea is excess body weight, which can lead to the accumulation of fat deposits around the upper airway, causing it to narrow or collapse during sleep. Other factors that can contribute to obstructive sleep apnea include structural anomalies in the airway, such as enlarged tonsils, a deviated septum, or a small jaw, which can restrict airflow. The symptoms of obstructive sleep apnea can vary, but the most common one is loud snoring. Other symptoms may include gasping for air during sleep, choking or snorting sounds, and waking up feeling tired or unrefreshed. People with obstructive sleep apnea may also experience headaches, memory problems, difficulty concentrating and mood changes. In severe cases, obstructive sleep apnea can increase the risk of high blood pressure, heart disease, stroke and other serious health problems. The diagnosis of obstructive sleep apnea typically involves a sleep study, which monitors breathing patterns, heart rate and other vital signs during sleep. Treatment options for obstructive sleep apnea depend on the severity of the condition and the underlying cause. Mild cases of obstructive sleep apnea may be treated with lifestyle changes, such as weight loss, avoiding alcohol and sleeping on the side rather than on the back. In moderate to severe cases, continuous positive airway pressure or CPAP therapy may be recommended, which involves wearing a mask that delivers air pressure to keep the airway open during sleep. Surgery may also be an option for some people with obstructive sleep apnea particularly if the airway obstruction is caused by structural abnormalities that can be corrected. The most common surgical procedures for obstructive sleep apnea include uvulopalatopharyngoplasty, which removes excess tissue from the throat, and maxillomandibular advancement, which involves moving the upper and lower jaw forward to increase the space in the airway. Let's now talk about central sleep apnea. Central sleep apnea is a type of sleeping disorder that occurs when the brain fails to send signals to the muscles responsible for breathing during sleep. This leads to a temporary cessation of breathing, which can last for a few seconds or longer and can occur multiple times during the night. Central sleep apnea is different from obstructive sleep apnea, which occurs when the airways become partially or completely blocked during sleep. The most common cause of central sleep apnea is a dysfunction in the brainstem which controls breathing. This dysfunction can be caused by a variety of factors, 
including heart failure, stroke, opioid use, and certain neurological disorders. People with central sleep apnea may also have a history of snoring, daytime sleepiness, and poor quality of sleep. The symptoms of central sleep apnea can vary, but the most common ones include episodes of interrupted breathing during sleep, frequent awakenings during the night, daytime sleepiness, morning headaches, and difficulty concentrating. In severe cases, central sleep apnea can increase the risk of heart failure and other serious health problems. Diagnosis of central sleep apnea typically involves a sleep study which monitors breathing patterns, heart rate, and other vital signs during sleep. Treatment options for central sleep apnea depend on the underlying cause of the condition. For people with heart failure, treatment may involve medications to improve heart function and oxygen therapy to improve breathing. For people with opioid-induced central sleep apnea, reducing or stopping opioid use may be recommended. In some cases, medications that stimulate breathing, such as acetazolamide or theophylline, may be prescribed. In severe cases of central sleep apnea, supplemental oxygen or non-invasive ventilation may be recommended. In rare cases, a pacemaker-like device may be implanted to stimulate breathing during sleep. However, these treatments are typically reserved for people with severe central sleep apnea who have not responded to other treatments. In the next part, I would like to talk about complex sleep apnea. Complex sleep apnea syndrome, also known as treatment emergent central sleep apnea, is a type of sleep disorder that is a combination of obstructive sleep apnea and central sleep apnea. It occurs when a person with obstructive sleep apnea, who is being treated with continuous positive airway pressure, or CPAP therapy, develops central sleep apnea. CPAP therapy is a common treatment for obstructive sleep apnea that involves wearing a mask that delivers air pressure to keep the airway open during sleep. However, in some cases, CPAP therapy can cause a shift in breathing patterns, leading to the development of central sleep apnea. This can result in symptoms such as disrupted sleep, fatigue, and difficulty concentrating. The treatment for complex sleep apnea involves a combination of treatments for both obstructive sleep apnea and central sleep apnea. Treatment options may include adjusting the CPAP settings to eliminate the central apneas, using a bi-level positive airway pressure machine that provides a different air pressure during inhalation and exhalation, and using medications that stimulate breathing. In some cases, surgery may be recommended to treat any underlying structural abnormalities in the airway that may be contributing to the obstructive sleep apnea. However, surgery is not typically recommended for the treatment of central sleep apnea. The symptoms of complex sleep apnea can vary, but they often include loud snoring, episodes of interrupted breathing during sleep, frequent awakenings during the night, morning headaches, and excessive daytime sleepiness. People with complex sleep apnea may also experience mood changes, memory problems, and difficulty concentrating. In the last part, I would like to highlight again the most important differences between obstructive sleep apnea and central sleep apnea. Obstructive sleep apnea is a disorder related to the anatomy of the throat. Here the muscles of the throat relax and block off the upper airways during sleeping. This blockage can be either partial or complete. In central sleep apnea, the anatomy of the airways is normal, but the brain does not send the needed signals to control the activity of the muscles that are needed to breathe properly during the night. The risk factors for obstructive sleep apnea are primarily excess weight, 
but also enlarged tonsils, anomalies in the anatomy of the throat, and chronic nasal congestion. The risk factors for central sleep apnea on the other side are congestive heart failure, neurological diseases, and damage to the brainstem that usually is responsible for controlling our breathing during the time of sleep. The treatment for both types includes CPAP machines, but for the obstructive type, lifestyle changes and surgeries are important to remember, while for central sleep apnea, medications and phrenic nerve stimulation are possible treatments. That's it for this video, I hope it was helpful and if you like our channel, please subscribe. Thank you very much and hopefully see you again in the next video.